UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, are something you've all likely heard of before, or come into contact with on TV, in movies, or in games. Oftentimes, they're perceived as being connected to extraterrestrial beings, aliens, but in reality, the term can extend to pretty much any aerial phenomenon that we either don't have a solid explanation for, or there simply isn't enough evidence to even begin trying to draft one. In today's video, however, we'll be taking a look at the lesser-known cousins of UFOs that aren't purely aerial. USOs, or unidentified submerged objects, are the water-based equivalent of UFOs. Per the unofficial community definition, it isn't so much the origin of an unidentified object that defines it, rather it's its current state of being. For example, a UFO that flies into and disappears in a lake would, at the moment of contact with water, become a USO, and vice versa. Today, I'll give you a brief overview of the long and extensive history of USO sightings. I'll go into some definitions and official stances, such as from the United States Navy. And all throughout, I'll be mentioning some of the creepiest and most famous reports made regarding these mysterious things. So, grab a tinfoil hat and let's dive into it. The history of USO sightings and reports is truly extensive, dating back to tales of strange sea creatures and monsters even during biblical times, but often it is actually the account of Christopher Columbus from his first voyage across the Atlantic Ocean in 1492 that's seen as one of the earliest written accounts of an encounter. 33 days after they'd last seen land, on the 11th of October at around 10pm, Columbus reported seeing a light seemingly emerge from the water and travel upward that he described as, quote, like a little wax candle rising and falling. It was only about four hours later that they first spotted land, uh, likely the modern-day San Salvador Island in the Bahamas. Some reports claim that another crew member observed the mysterious lights as well, while others claim the lights reappeared multiple times throughout that night. Truth is, we probably won't ever know how much of it really is true, especially since many speculate this sighting might have been exaggerated over the years, but the story is nevertheless intriguing and serves as one of the first proper reports of a USO. Many similar reports would follow over the years. For example, in what is considered one of the first USO slash UFO sightings in the modern day United States, John Winthrop would write in a diary entry dated January 18, 1644, quote, About midnight, three men coming in a boat to Boston saw two lights arise out of the water near the north point of the town cove, in form like a man, and went at a small distance to the town and so to the south point, and there vanished away. What exactly these men might have seen, we can't know. But it is worth noting that in the days following this event, John would record additional sightings, as well as a mysterious disembodied voice that could be heard calling, Boy, boy, come away, come away, over the quiet waters. Lastly, on this trip down history lane, I want to briefly mention the somewhat infamous USS Trepang, a submarine in the United States Navy that was carrying out missions in the Arctic in the year 1971. While stationed there, it supposedly captured several, now very famous, USO and UFO images that have since their publishing been heavily discussed in the community and seem to re-emerge every few years. Now, of course, many have claimed that these images are fake or simply altered images of icebergs. However, it's still a very famous case and I thought it worth bringing up. Clearly, there have been many reports of USOs throughout history, some more credible than others, but it's interesting to note that the US Navy actually recognizes USOs as somewhat of a category of phenomena and has spoken about them on several occasions, most recently perhaps in the 2022 article from the US Naval Institute titled, USOs, not UFOs, have been the greatest threat to the Navy. Admittedly, this is a rather lighthearted take on the topic. However, 
The article does list some real encounters the Navy has had over the years. For instance, the story of USS Steen, a Knox-class destroyer in the US Navy fleet between the years of 1970 and 1992. It was in 78 when the ship started experiencing some unusual noise. Upon inspection, the rubber coating of its sonar dome was damaged by multiple cuts over 8% of the dome's surface, with the remnants of sharp, curved claws that would be found on the tentacles of some giant squids. Alarmingly, the claw marks hinted at a creature a magnitude larger than the biggest colossal squid that had been detected up to that point, so who knows what was really trying to grab a hold of that device. Here, I'll also note that in a 2017 article published by The Sun, Mark D'Antonio, an astronomer and chief video analyst for the UFO organization MUFON, claims to have witnessed an alien craft traveling at hundreds of knots while on board a US Navy submarine. Supposedly, the officers then proceeded to log it as part of something called the Fast Mover Program, seemingly some sort of a classified effort to detect and catalog USOs. Now, how much weight you really want to put on claims like these is up to you, but I'll say at least that I wouldn't be all that surprised if the Navy did keep a pretty detailed record of encounters with phenomena they can't explain. And now for the last chapter of this video, I've selected three somewhat famous and certainly creepy USO reports to leave you with something fun to think about. On the 4th of October 1967, in what would later be dubbed the Shag Harbor Incident, a large unknown object impacted the waters of Shag Harbor in Nova Scotia, Canada. At around 11.20 pm, at least 11 people reported a low flying object headed toward the harbor. The initial call came from Laurie Wickens, who, together with four of his friends, thought they saw a large object descending into the water around 250 to 300 meters off the coast. But that's not all. Only a few hours earlier, more than three and a half kilometers up in the air, the first officer of the International Air Canada Flight 305 reported a brilliantly lit rectangular object tracking along on a parallel course a few miles away. A very similar looking object was later described by multiple other residents of that area and seemed to fit the location and appearance of the initial sighting. A full rescue operation was conducted in the fear that the object was a crashing aircraft, but neither the fishing boats nor the official diving rescuers ever managed to uncover what this strange phenomenon was. If you are, however, hoping for a more satisfying explanation, then the following report that was initially labeled as a USO might be the right one for you. On the 29th of August 1964, the Antarctic research ship USNS El Tannen took a photo of a strange object while photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn in South America. This object would come to be known as the El Tannen Antenna, since as described by Brad Seiger for the Saga magazine, it was, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery, very much like a cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna. The picture is undoubtedly strange and gives off a very eerie vibe, but there later came to be a very solid explanation for it. It appears that what the ship had photographed is actually a species of carnivorous sponge that, while very alien looking, is very much of this world. Or so they say. One last encounter before we wrap up, and this one is quite strange. In the summer of 2011, Peter Lindenberg and Dennis Aberg were treasure hunting around the Baltic Sea with their Swedish Ocean X diving team when their sonar detected a strange object underwater. Dubbed the Baltic Sea Anomaly, this object appears to be a strange, almost man-made geological formation on the seabed. Obviously, many theories about this anomaly quickly surfaced, with claims of alien civilizations and secret government projects among them. A sample of this formation was retrieved and sent to Volker Bruckert, an associate professor of geology at the University of Stockholm, who determined it was mostly a combination of granites and sandstones, 
not unusual for a seabed such as this one. The sonar photo also drew a slew of criticism, with some accusing OceanX of sensationalizing the image to promote submarine tours to said area for wealthy tourists. At the end of the day, the image does look really strange. A natural formation or maybe something else? You be the judge. But that brings us to the conclusion of this brief exploration into the world of USOs. Of course, I have to point out that the vast majority of reports and sightings of these stem from purely anecdotal evidence that can range from questionable to downright wild, so I implore you to take many of the supposed alien spaceships with a grain of salt. With that, however, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. Please go check out the plushie and with that, I'm gonna wish you all a beautiful rest of the day and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.